What is your proudest moment as an actor? My proudest moment as an actor? I mean, I've had, I guess I've had a few. I guess it's in playing the characters. I, I hope I haven't had it yet. I hope, I hope that mm. it's still to come, yeah, you know, yeah. where I'm like, wow, this yeah. moment. But um, I've had some great moments. I think playing Selena for me was a great moment in my career. I just, I don't know, it was like a turning point, big leading role for me at that time. There was much, you know, ado about what I got paid and a Latin actress never being paid that before. And so I just felt like there was a, a barrier that was broken in that moment. And, mm. I, and I felt really good about that. And I always remember that time in my career. Mm. You were so great in that. Thank you, mm -hmm. thank you, thank you. Well, to tell you the truth, I'm really proud of getting to work with wonderful writers. So I think it started with David Mamet, mm. and then it went to Aaron Sorkin, and now wow. I'm getting to work with John Ridley. So I would say that's my proudest and most thing I'm, I'm most grateful for. Yeah, that they want you, that they're like, that's the person I want. Or they got stuck with me, I don't know. They I think a bunch it. of other people said no, and then they were like, what about Felicity? I, and I got I it. I highly doubt that. <laughs> no, I think that's true. I highly doubt I'm still that. very, those are, that's what I'm really proud of. Yeah, that's amazing. I think as an actor, the thing that you want the most is to work with talented yeah. writers, directors, get great material. We, we're nothing without that. He picked me up with Gil Baker, threatened to put me in jail. Use Christina as influence. I mean, everything that you said that they were gonna do, they did. When? How long ago? Last night. I think the thing about Harley, and again, that kind of compelled me to want to do it because it's so challenging to do our dramas, and I don't think yeah. it's probably the hardest job in our field. Mm -hmm. You know, is yeah. the, the hours how demanding it is, the pages, the lines you have to learn and you're in, in one every day, scene. how fast you go, yes, yeah. when you're the lead in it and you're in every scene and you're just, oh my God, that speech is today? Yeah, yeah. With these other 12 pages? <laughs> you know, it's like, the, the, it's, there's that part of it, but then there's also like the character and how complex she is and when you're lucky enough to get a character like that. And I, I found myself with, with Harley, who's kind of like on a tightrope walk yeah. The whole season she was, you know, it was just like, how am I going to balance this? How do I keep myself out of jail and not betray everything that is dear to me? Mm. Everything that I care about. Like, how do I do that? Um, and and I found myself as she, you know, again, having this Adi Hasak, and I talked about this, this slippery slope of like, you know, you do this as a law enforcement, you know, it's like, okay, well, I'll just take this Coke from the fridge and then it's okay. And then I'm, well, maybe next time we'll take the watch off the dead guy, or, you know, and yeah, these yeah. things that you start doing and that, and then the lying. And for me, I think the biggest challenge was figuring out like, okay, I'm lying to the audience here, uh -huh, uh -huh. but I'm not lying, I'm lying to the person here, but the audience doesn't know that but they know about, the, it, it was just, it was so confusing at times. I, 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 I was like, I'm so glad I don't live a dishonest life like this. <laughs> I could never do this. And Harley had to navigate that shit storm, let's yeah. say, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm yeah. like, how do I, how do I keep all of, how do I stay afloat? Um, but for me, that was, that was kind of the challenge and also the thrill of it too. I think the thing about playing a, a complex character uh, who's good and bad and multi-layered is basically synonymous with good writing. Right. Because if it's not that, it's, it's two-dimensional. And um, the way I try and endorse it is, I feel that if you have something that's well-written, every character is trying to do good as they see it. I mean, even if you were playing... But that's God, the key, as they see it. Of course, right? of course. But yeah. if you're playing Hitler, what he's trying to do is he's trying to save the world. Right. Um, so with someone like last year on American Crime who is somewhat of a, a bigot and a racist, not from her point of view, or this year someone who is um, in American Crime, someone who's wedded to the industrial good, you know, she's backing the institution. It had to be something that I could endorse. So as a person, I try and get behind it on, in my motivation. Yeah. You know, I mean, this year I was trying to save a school. You have to believe that in doing that, yeah. you know, if that institution falls, then life falls apart. Yeah. It's over as we know it. Yeah. And 
getting inside of that is, is, is the trick, I think, to play it convincingly as you do. Yeah, you have to be able to endorse it. Yeah. Otherwise, Believe it's it. a lie. Yeah. I think that's the thing. It was funny when I was working with Barry uh, in the pilot episodes, yeah. in the first few episodes, uh, Barry Levinson, I, it was the one thing that I was, I think, most proud of. I didn't talk about a proud moment as mm. an actor, is having him come to me and he goes, what I love about your acting is that you're constantly searching for the truth in every word. And it's true. It's like I almost couldn't say it. Yeah. If I, it, just even one little thing, if I didn't, like you said, get behind it, endorse it, believe it. Yeah, yeah. In every single way, the smallest of lines. But it's, it's, it's about that. It's about finding that truth in every single word and, and standing behind it as you would as we are talking right now, you yeah. know? And that's, to me, the exciting part. When it gets that natural, when it gets that real, when I understand it that much, when I believe it that wholly, mm -hmm. that it is, it's, it, it comes off that way. And you're just not play acting anymore. Yeah, you're yeah. just kind of being. Well, when you said, you said, you know, I had to keep in mind, I was lying to the audience, but I'm right. lying to this guy, but I'm telling the How truth to this, this guy. How do you play this sometimes? Yeah, but when I watched your season, it was all, your character was always coming from a deep, deep truth and always talking to people from a deep truth. So that's part of the reason why, as an audience member, you Thank could you. endorse her, even though she did questionable things. Yeah, you, just, you, you felt like, at the end of the day, she is trying to save her daughter. Like, people can get on board with that. Yeah. Even when you're, like, doing oh, the yeah. most... <laughs> wow. Things that you would never do in real life. You're like, how, how is this happening right now? Yeah. Like, I would never do this. But you, you believe it. You, you get on board with it. <laughs> You're in a good position. You were in a good position not long ago. Someone asked you to speak to what you know. What did you say about me? You said you understood why someone would want to kill me. My experience of, of working on broadcast TV, I'm just going to grab this yeah, one. Yeah, go ahead. Um, and the limitations and the boundaries because, you know, network, I guess, has a reputation as being safe, uh, and if you really want to, you know, walk the gangplank, you go to network or stream. Uh, you go to uh, yeah, cable, cable or streaming. But I think there's a difference between limitations and boundaries. Mm -hmm. And I think certainly, you know, because of the FCC, there are boundaries mm -hmm. to network television. But I also think, by the very nature and mandate of network TV, which is to serve the common, to serve the public good, mm -hmm. at least American crime has always been, John Ridley and Michael McDonald have always been encouraged to do the highest level of their work and yeah. to tell stories and reflect the diverse nature of, you know, America that we live in and never, never pull back on telling a hard Harsh, truth. ugly truth. Yeah. I mean, we never had suits on set. There was never in the network coming in going, wait, she's going to look like that? She's yeah. going to wear those glasses? Shouldn't she have makeup on? Are you sure you want to show a drug den? Are you sure you want to show that murder? I mean, I think if you've seen American Crime, it's it, the, particularly the first season, it's, it's hard to watch. Yeah. Because it's so stark. And... Um, and I think that's where network television is going. And I think those stories are underserved in yeah. cable and streaming. I, I agree. I feel like, if anything, our network was encouraging us to push the boundaries as much as we could and tell the truth as much as we could and be as shocking. Because you can't, you really can't compete with cable in that sense because they can go so far with the violence, with the sex, with all of this stuff. But you realize that you don't need all of that to tell a great story or yeah. to show intense, uh, you know, uh, situations. Yeah. They, they're still just as intense when left to the imagination. Yeah. In a sense. You know, people can fill in those blanks so easily and I, I felt very encouraged by our network to to uh, did they ever come in and sort of go oh, I don't know about that I, I, no I, 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 I don't know of anything that they did in this season you know and I don't know you know we, you know it's our first season but uh, where we felt like we had to take something out because it was too edgy or too much um, we kind of went went for what was real for that world yeah you know um, but I find it too with, with network and cable, it's like there, there's kind of a safety in it too. There's a, it's a blessing and a curse, right? Because the, because there's you know the curse of like people like you said limitations, yeah. which I haven't really felt as much, but it also um, you know kind of 
there's things like that I look at in TV that I go, would I have felt comfortable with as a woman doing that or as a mother doing that? I don't know sometimes. As an actress, I always want to believe I always, I'll go where I have to go and do whatever I have to do. But because it's so far now <laughs> yeah, yeah. that you go, I look at some s scenes on, you know, some of the, these shows that I actually love watching yeah. and go, I get angry. I go, wow, they put her through that? Damn. Yeah. You know what I yeah, mean? Like, I yeah. would I have been okay with that? Would I be fighting with the producers backstage going, did it have to be that long? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, did I yeah. have to walk naked through the street for that long? <laughs> would you throw in the poop at me? I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's just... I know exactly what scene you're, you're talking about. about. Yeah. It infuriated me. And yeah. maybe that's what it was meant to do. You yeah. know what I mean? And good on them for that. Mm -hmm. But as an actress, it w it made me like, ugh, yeah, did they I take you. advantage of this woman? Yeah, yeah. You know, so being on network, I know we won't ever have to deal with anything <laughs> like that. So maybe that's a selfish thing, you know, being a mom. But no, you know, I as an actress, right. you want to. You want to. You want to do whatever it is, you know, you want to be fearless and brave. And yeah. she certainly was in that moment. Yeah, you know? she was. Um, but... Uh, but uh, it's it's funny being on network. You know, we don't have to deal with with that right. type of thing or having to worry about that dilemma, that moral yeah. dilemma within yeah. yourself, which we do put ourselves through things like that as actresses. Oh, totally. I remember that, doing that things. Sentence. Yes, it's necessary for the scene. Right, and you're like, for you to be naked. Damn. Like, yeah, what? totally. Buck ass, right? Yeah, and you're like. Do I feel good about this later? I'm gonna go to my trailer and cry. I think. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what yeah, I mean? Totally. And nobody knows about that stuff, and yeah. you know, and you do it, and they think it's all fine, and it takes a toll on your soul, you yeah. know. And you have to make those decisions later. And when you have kids, you think about that stuff even more. Yeah. Um, I still like to think I'm a renegade, but you know, being a mom changes things a little bit. Yeah, it really does. It gives you a broader view. Yeah. It just doesn't make sense. Why would he want to hurt me now? He's been nothing but nice to me. You can't trust an abuser, Christina. All right, they take everything that you hate about yourself and they use it to control you. <sighs> if you have an answer for this, <laughs> how do you balance kids in a career? I, Give it to me. Yeah, no, I listen. Well, I want to hear this. about you too. Oh, I just me. feel. Listen, I feel like it's a lot. Th those kids come first, and once you know that, and once everybody in your life knows that, every they'll they'll work with you. They'll be on board with you, you know, to to make sure everything's taken care of. But you, you that that priority is 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 tantamount to my success in everything else that I do. Do you know? What do you mean? Meaning, it without it, without that being right, yeah, yeah, nothing yeah. else works. Yeah. I can't be right. You yeah. know, like I worry too much. I'm, you know. So, and I have so many things that I juggle besides the show. Yeah. Um, and I, I produce it as well. So there's, there's, there's always that guilt we talk about. You yeah, know, that mommy guilt. Yeah, and I think it's just about, I schedule things. It's about having a great schedule. It's about people understanding that when I say no, it's no. When I can, I can't. And, and, and that's it. And um, do you have a rule like, I'm trying to always be home at dinner? I yeah. know you can't do that no. when you're doing it. Well, with, yes, I mean, you, you, you can sometimes, you know, you go, I, I haven't been home the last couple of nights. You know what? You're going to have to get me out a little bit earlier. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. I haven't seen my kids. That's not okay. Yeah. It's like, and if you want me to be okay and you know, you got to be at a certain point in your career to do that. Yes. You can't start off doing that. <laughs> like, <see> trust me. <laughs> yeah, trust me. I, I, we paid our dues at this point though, yeah. where we've, we've done that. But I just feel like, you know, it's, it's, it's having great people around you. It's having good people to help you take care of those kids. It's about, you know, my kids visit me at the set. They have a room on the set, you know, so after school they come right there. Oh, that's great. I try to shoot the show in the summer, so it's only a couple months that I'm doing the show um, okay. when they're in school, yeah. you know, um, so they can visit me constantly. And it's just like, it's that's part of their life. It's become part of their life, you know. Oh, where are you today? I, you know, my son, where are you today, mommy? Are you doing photo shoot? Or are you on the set? Are you at the <laughs> recording studio? You know, he knows. And right. where are we going? And so he can go, well, at the recording studio, I like to play with this. Or, yeah, you know, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. or I should bring my iPad because it's boring when you're on the set. You know I mean? <laughs> like, we work it out and we have a, a life and this is their life. And we travel a lot. And What percentage would you say you feel guilty about your kids during the day? I'm not saying because they you should, but yeah. I'm just no, saying. Yeah, no, but you I'm do. I'm just always interested. Um, 
a lot. I think a lot. <laughs> yeah. A lot I think about them. A lot I think of, do they need me right now? What are they doing? Are they okay? Oh, let me text. Oh, I, oh, or if I get lost in my work for a little while, yeah. I feel so guilty when I yeah. come out of that haze. Yeah. You know, like, oh God, it's been seven hours and I haven't even checked on them. What's oh. wrong with me? What kind of mother are you? Totally. <laughs> you know what I mean? I read the best study, you'll love this. So they asked working moms, they said, what percentage of you guys feel guilty about working outside the home? And it was 98%. And they said, even part-time moms, what percentage? And it was, again, like 98%. Mm -hmm. And then they asked working dads, both, both uh, you know, full-time and part-time. And guess what percentage of working dads feel guilty about their kids? Was it zero? Goose egg. That's exactly right. <laughs> it's so not at all. They don't give. A, it, it's such no, a different it's just experience. So different. It's such a different experience. It's I such know. a different thing. I, know. I just went. Why are we walking around just burdened by it all the time? Because they're attached to us. <laughs> it's like this part of you is right there, and you're like, I gotta take care of that. They're like. You know when it was over for them. You know what I mean? It was done. And they're like, okay, you got this? Yeah, you got this. I know. I it's kept like, turning to my husband going, why am I climbing lead on this all the time? Yeah, because he has a series too that yeah, he's probably yeah. gone yeah, six directing, days a week directing, sure, doing, doing the whole series, thing. Yeah. What? Yeah, I know. It's totally, it's not the same. No, it's not. I, it, it, I, it's, I, I would like it to be a little more even, but I don't know if that's possible. You know what? Not going to happen. Not in that area, I don't think. Yeah. There's this question of diversity now that's come up so much our topic of diversity has come up so much especially in film tv it's a little bit different i, I find mm -hmm. i find and um just wondering what your thoughts were on that um i think it's a great question i think there's more diversity in television because there's more diversity of how people watch it you know we don't just have network anymore anytime you have a screen uh people watch stuff it's not brand anymore you can you know hulu and network and cable and all that sort of stuff. So it's very different how people watch. So many more stories get told. Um, I think many more people are creating television now. I mean, what are there, 470 scripted shows out there right now? Which means you just pull from a greater diverse group of people to tell their stories. Um, and I think it's fabulous. I have to say, um, John Ridley and Michael McDonald both have so much diversity on our set in terms of writers, directors, producers. We had a female um, DP, camera mm. op. I mean, it's white, yellow, bi, straight, whatever it is, it's a real um, amalgamation. And, and that's admirable. And I think you have the opportunity in television, which yeah. is great. Yeah, I think television has always been very, it's because it's in our living rooms. Yeah. It's almost like it's okay to show exactly what's happening in in society. Where movies is like this thing that's an idealized, sixty foot version of people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a yeah. different thing. And TV has always been just on the forefront of pushing the envelope on this is what's going on in the world. This yeah. is what people are really saying in their living rooms. This is what we're thinking. And the more you can kind of be real with that. It's what people tune in to watch yeah. because it's 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 literally a mirror of society and their own homes, and I just feel like that's why it's easier to have that diversity on TV. People want to see exactly who they are. There. When you guys were casting your show and working on it, did you specifically say I want to cast well, many different? Well, it's funny. We we wanted it to reflect the New York precinct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, in Brooklyn, and you can't do that without black, white, Latino, Asian, you know, Indian, everything that you could think of. You yeah. know, you have to have it. Italian, Irish, Jew, yeah. every that's New York. You know, and when we were casting, there were certain roles like uh, the young innocent rookie. Um, who arcs into something else, but um, he, who was a white character, oh. Loman, and we decided to make the young innocent cop black, and uh, and Dio, uh, who plays Loman, does a, a really great job yeah, doing wonderful. it. Yeah, um, was was a perfect choice. Same thing with Tufo. Tufo was supposed to be like the Italian guy whatever, and he wound up being a black character, whereas uh, the Saperstein character was supposed to be 
uh, have something else. It, it was just, it was just like the actors that came in. Oh. It was funny. Their attitudes told us who they were going to be. Nava, who plays my love interest in the ADA, yeah. was came in for Tufo. That was the type. Oh. And then I said, he's perfect for Nava, like for the leading kind of love interest, yeah. you know, forthright ADA guy. He's yeah. so perfect for that. Totally, you know, came in for a totally different role. So we really cast for who we thought the essence of the people were instead of what the color of they were outside. That's cool. And it was it was a great experience. I wound up reading with everybody who wound up getting cast in the in the sessions, and it was great. It was great because we were able to go, no. Me and Barry were like, we just saw Tuvo. <laughs> That's Tuvo. That's not, you know, that person, you know, whatever. So it was, it was a really fun experience, and we realized, like, this is how it should be, you know? It should be, we should be looking at the inside, yeah, not the yeah. outside of people. It's great. Yeah, it was a great, it was a great thing. And I, I think our, our cast is phenomenal. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we couldn't have done a better job with the people that we had. I, there's no thing where you look at it and you go, ah, maybe we could have done better there. I really feel like we have one of the best casts on TV. Oh, they're, all, they're all great. Thank you, thank yeah. you. I know you think I'm a liar right now. I deserve that. But I really am who you think I am. I'm also someone that you'd swear I'm not. How did you get your first job or who gave you your first job or what was your first break? No, my, I guess first job. My first job ever yeah. in the industry? Acting, yes. Oh, acting? Or, or, no, I guess in the industry because you do everything. Well, I started as a dancer. Okay. And a singer and I, and I did musical first. But my first job in acting, um, I was a fly girl in Living Color at the time, and nobody thought I was gonna be an actor. I was like, I'm gonna be an actress, okay? <laughs> I'm not a dancer forever. And um, I went in on this Rosie Perez type uh, role in this pilot called South Central for Fox Studios or Fox Network, or CBS Studios, something, I don't know. And uh, it was one scene, and I went in and I got it, it was crazy. It was, I had been taking acting classes and took it very seriously. You know how you are when like you're a young actor? Oh it's yes, like, life or death. acting. Yes. Okay. It was very much that for me. I was going to be, you know. Did you sit in the stage, waiting room with Shakespeare. all the other girls that were going into audition? Did you sit there? And... Um, I don't, you know, I don't remember. I just remember going into the room. Yeah. If there, I don't remember there was a lot of people outside. I just remember going into the room and doing the thing and them laughing you know, because it was a comedy, it was a sitcom, uh, and thinking, I nailed that. <laughs> <laughs> if they don't give me this job, there's something wrong with them. You know? <laughs> and, I, and I got it. And then I, I, was, I remember I had just booked the Janet Jackson tour to dance and go on tour for two years. And I called and said, you know, I, I'm going to do this pilot. And they were like, are you crazy? Two years of work? And you want to do a pilot? And I was like, if I'm not going to bank on me, who is, you know? <laughs> How so old were you? I, did, I was 22 at the time or something. Damn. Yeah, I was young. I was young. Did your mom and dad really believe in you? Is that where you got the like, if I'm not, or did they not believe in you at all? You know, How it was, did you it get was that hard. Sentence? You know, my Puerto Rican parents from the Bronx, nobody in our family was in the business in any way, shape, or form. Like, it was so, it was like, <clears throat> it's like another planet yeah yeah and you know I, I remember telling my mom I wanted to dance professionally and I wasn't didn't want to go to college and she was like you're going to college and I'm like no I'm not and she's like you know what you are and I'm like no I'm not and we got into a huge fight and my dad and I told him I said I really want to pursue this as a career yeah. and he's like okay you know he was kind of like all right if that's your dream you should go for that. And my mom was just afraid and more practical about it. And like, you should do this. And I had to wind up leaving the house to pursue that, to become a dancer. Because you had to try, because you had to travel? Well, no, because she wasn't going to allow it. She wasn't going to allow it. Wow. I, I, I'm, like I'm now, I'm back in the Bronx. She wasn't going to allow it. <laughs> she was like, now I'm talking like I <laughs> talked when I was back there. Yeah, but she wasn't going to allow it at all. And so I had to move out and then, you know, just, find my way I slept in the dance studio and get the f no out. yep wow I talked to the dance teacher he had a thing for me and I was like how oh, I, I have nowhere to stay <laughs> he was like you can stay here in the dance studio I was like okay I'll do a work scholarship took like dance class all day long 
you know, started auditioning, you know. And then when I got my first job, I was going to Europe and they were like, oh, nobody in my family had been to Europe, really. So they were like, oh, maybe, okay, so maybe, maybe, this is a, maybe she could do this. So, and that's how kind of it all started. Amazing. We my did. son was raped. You need to be careful with that. If somebody messed him up, they touched him, that is rape. You need to be very careful with that word. How did you get your first job? <laughs> was it in acting or? I grew up in the Bronx and I really wanted to dance. <laughs> and I slept. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I just don't, I was like, you did? <laughs> Steal your story. Um, I am the youngest of eight kids. Yes. And uh, I knew I wanted to act. And uh, From I From what age? I was about eight. Really? And uh, my mother, when she was younger, was sort of was an actress, and so she went, "Yes, go do it." So I started going oh, to. Not... Your mom was an actress. Yeah, when like she was, you in... know, nineteen. Yeah, she worked, you know, in the theater in New York. Okay. So um, I just started studying, and I went to school for it. And she uh, must be so proud. Yes, she was <laughs> very proud. She wasn't proud of me doing television. She was proud of me doing stage. She was like, "Are you that's still funny. doing that television?" Oh, that's I don't hilarious. I appreciate it. But my first job was, I moved out to LA when I was 15, mm -hmm. without my parents. 15, they yeah. let you go? Yeah, I'm the eighth kid. She was like, where are you going? Okay, Bye. all right, I'll see you. Do you have dimes <laughs> to call home? Um, That's and I auditioned for this ABC after school special. I was 15 and, and, I, and I got- Where did you stay? You just got on a plane and I went stayed to with my friend, my gay friend, Ray Underwood, in a tiny little room that was kind of like a linen closet. And, uh, and I got a job and that was my very, and that's how I got my SAG card. Wow. A long, long time ago. That's awesome. <laughs> That's very brave. I would have never left home at 15. You fucking did leave no, home. No, but I was like 18. Pfft, big deal. Ish. Well, had yeah. you had seven siblings above right. you, no. you would have been like, no, I think 15's good. I'm out of here. <laughs>